Time to get real, reality TV aficionados. Welcome to the Giorgio Says Podcast. I'm your host, the one and only Giorgio Takanakis, and I'm here serving you the juiciest updates on all your favorite reality shows weekly, as well as the hottest pop culture trends and even exclusive interviews that will leave you wanting more. This podcast will keep you on the edge of your seat. We definitely need to talk about this. The Giorgio Says Podcast starts now. All right, my friends, welcome to another episode of Giorgio Says the Podcast. You know it's Thursday, so we have to break down the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills season finale. Season 13 is a wrap, you guys. It's over. Not completely over. We still have three parts of a reunion that needs to play out over the next few weeks. However, this episode, this finale rather, was quite interesting. We knew that the uh, story around Kyle and Mo was going to kind of be the centerpiece for the finale because we knew that while they were filming, or when the People Magazine article came out, that cameras went back up. Now, I have my own theories around some of the scenes that we saw earlier in the season perhaps being shot when the cameras went back up but that's my own theory there's nothing that I really have to gauge that off of there's just like an energy from some of the scenes that didn't feel like they were in the same timeline I also feel like after watching this finale that it's clear to me at the very least that Kyle Kyle, how can I say this? Because I'm 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 empathetic to the situation, right? I get that we were all bamboozled and and kind of having this Morgan Wade thing thrown in our face. And I don't really quite understand what's going on there outside of a friendship, and that I could care less about. I think what people are most confused about is what was it or what were the things that took place that brought Kyle to this moment where she's basically she's done and I said this in my TikTok recap she's done done and we saw that pretty much the entire season now here is the thing and I will recap the episode uh but I really want to kind of focus this episode or the recap rather around more on the commentary side of what I feel is going on and what I think I took away from the last few minutes, really, where Kyle's answering some questions before they wrap. I I struggle with the fact that Kyle has been on the show for so long and has wanted others in the group to be honest, to say what's going on, even when they may not want to for whatever reason. Listen, I get it, okay? This is a reality show. It's heavily edited. You add music to things, it changes the whole dynamic of what the conversation originally probably played out as. I get all that. If I were in Kyle's shoes, would I be doing the same thing? Here's the thing. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe I would. I don't think it's a matter of understanding why she may not be coming out full throttle with all of their business. But I think when you look back on allegations pertaining to Mo, and this goes back. This isn't just recently. This is over the span of years. These things have kind of crept up here and there and then they go away but maybe it's because of her girls she doesn't want to put him on blast like that and make him look like a terrible person obviously that would probably impact his business at the agency I'm sure there's a lot of conversations I also think Mo is not as cool calm collected Mo as he plays himself to be on TV. I think behind closed doors, I think he's having a a lot of issues with the way this whole thing's being handled. And maybe perhaps that is why Kyle 
was on eggshells because maybe if Maybe if he wasn't so vocal behind closed doors, now again, I'm speculating, but if he, it, he seems like someone that behind closed doors would give her the runaround anyway. And then on top of it, he doesn't want to look bad. So that on top of everything else that Kyle was dealing with, she was on pins and needles because she knows that this can come up in the group and sometimes things can spread like wildfire and sometimes it may not even be true. And again, the edits, the way that things can be pulled together can make someone look one way and maybe they weren't that way. It's just these moments that get picked up. Again, they film for long periods of time. They film a ton of stuff. A lot of it we don't even see. So, you know, they don't, they don't always know what their edit is going to be until the show starts to play out. But in this situation, we have Kyle, who has been very adamant in the situation being that there was no infidelity, there was no other person, there's no, like, craziness that everyone's speculating around on her side, too, because she pointed out again last night, I it, it's not... Uh, infidelity on my side it's not an infidelity on his side maybe it's not just one okay here's the thing about Kyle and we can go on and on and on I actually I'm super interested in doing a deep dive on Kyle's journey from before Housewives and then throughout just to get a full spectrum because I've been following Kyle pretty much since she's been on you know, season one of Housewives, even though I knew who she was because she had made appearances on some of Paris Hilton's shows. And, um, but I think it's fascinating because, you know, this couple was looked at as one of the best couples on Bravo TV. I mean, so many people modeled their marriages after Kyle and Moe's relationship. So, to be on this show for so long and never have any hiccups show up on camera. And then this season plays out and it's such a starch difference from the way that we've seen them in the past. Whereas this, this season, it was like they were, they quite literally were living separate lives. Yes. They live under the same roof, but you can tell there's no real interaction with them day to day. Like they're both off doing their own stuff. They communicate when it comes to probably the household, the girls, et cetera. But outside of that, it seemed like, yeah, we're done here. We're done here. All right. Sorry. I, I went on a little rant there, but I just, I have so much on my mind regarding this Kyle Richard stuff. So nonetheless, I am going to break down the recap for this finale episode for you guys. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to get into the Kyle and Mo of it all. Golly Nutrition is an inventive, people-focused nutrition company committed to providing innovative products that make taking your daily supplements simple and delicious. Their products are formulated with quality ingredients you can pronounce and flavors your taste buds will absolutely enjoy. And at the core of it all, they lead with purpose. Golly for Good is an initiative committed to playing a profound role in supporting the health of our planet as well as our local communities. Learn more about their initiatives, such as B Corp certification, Vitamin Angels Partnership, and Eden Reforestation Projects at their Golly for Good page. And if you use my special code, the Giorgio says at checkout, you will receive a special discount. Now let's get back into the episode. All right, my friends, thank you so much for sticking around. I really appreciate it. So where were we? Yes, we're recapping season 13 Beverly Hills finale. It was last night. If you missed it, you didn't miss much because I'll be honest with you. There's a lot of stuff that was already in the trailer that we saw. So nothing really eye-opening came out except for the last few minutes, which I'll touch on. But we start the episode off because originally this episode was going to be focused around ending the season at Kyle's white party. We saw the the coverage of the party when they were filming it. 
all of that stuff. This was a grand, grand party. I was actually like confused, not in a hater kind of way, but almost like why SoFi Stadium? It's quite massive to have your white party on the football field. No, I, was there no other places? It it was beautiful. Kevin Lee, you know Kevin Lee, Lisa Vanderpump's event coordinator planner. He's done many of her parties. Uh, so Kevin Lee was hired by Kyle because her point was, this is an over-the-top way to bring the white party back. So I need an over-the-top party planner. And I agree. Listen, if I had Kevin Lee money, Kevin Lee would be doing all of my parties. She, 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 Beverly Hills, baby. I, a funny story, actually. When I lived in New York, I... um. I was doing work with a brand that was inside Bergdorf Goodman and I would see him from time to time. And I have to say he is, he is something else. He has got a personality like no other. It's not just for TV. He is very animated and he always looks exactly the way he looks on TV. So it's not a put on whatsoever. So I thought that was kind of funny because I was like, I remember when I saw him, I was like, wow, it's literally like watching him on the show. Because sometimes when you see some of these people, because I've seen Erica Jane, I've seen a lot of the housewives come in uh, just being in New York and then at Bergdorf Goodman. Um, but I remember being like, wow, like, good for him. Like, he's so, like, in his own world. Like, it's it's crazy. But he clearly runs a successful party planning business he throws some amazing parties that we've been able to watch yeah but no what I was going to say was there's some people that are on reality tv they put on this this aesthetic for the the show but then you see them in real life and you're like oh I get it you're just kind of you're embellishing a lot he is not one of those people he is exactly who he puts himself out there to be so I thought that was interesting nonetheless Kevin Lee is planning this white party for Kyle. Again, this is weird to me because this is supposed to be Kyle and Moe's white party. This is something that they started. This is like a tradition of theirs. And Moe is nowhere to be found. So it, it's clear he's very absent from the season and he's clearly absent from the party planning for a white party that he's technically co-hosting, but it's looking like it was more Kyle's party than anything. So is Kyle going to be taking over the white party altogether? I have no clue. Uh, but Erica Jane is excited because she was asked by Kyle to be a performer and give the, give the people entertainment, baby. And, uh, you know, Erica's a showgirl, honey. She's going to give the crowd what they want. And, and she say what you want about Erica, but she puts herself out there and like, does she really, even if she does, cause I know she does give a shit. She does a really good job of, even though she probably feels insecure, probably, you know, all those things, she still shows up. So you have to, you have to give it to her. She does clearly love this craft and it feels like this is part of her DNA. Like she was always meant to be a performer. So I was happy that she was able to turn the page this season and end it by her being on stage for this finale, because I think it, it kind of gives a nice full rounded view of Erica and her story over the last couple of years so it's nice. Now we can kind of start moving in the in the forward direction and not having to like keep coming back to this issue with the Girardi stuff. Even though there's stuff that's still going to play out, it shouldn't be taking over her entire storyline anymore. And I'm glad this season happened because it kind of turned the page. So if she were to come back next season, I think we would continue to see new layers of Erica. And I, I've definitely changed a lot of my opinions watching her this season I know you guys will come for me for that but I've already been up front I I can be mad about how housewives handle things or how they act but I I'm not someone that holds grudges like that I'm not a creator that's like anti 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 to the point where it's like I'll never turn the page 
Because you know what? I take my notes from Housewives. Conflict resolution. I've never had real conflict with any of the Housewives. Thank God. Um, well, Jen Pendranti blocked me because I exposed her man Ryan. But I mean, that's not really a conflict. That's she's she's a nobody. But like, um, oh, that was very Adrian Maloof of me. Who is Jennifer Pendranti in this world? She's a nobody. Um, no, I'm just joking. Uh, not really. But um, anyways, so we're at SoFi Stadium. Everyone's getting ready for this white party. I mean, everyone from Jeff Lewis is there. We have uh, who else was there? There was a couple other people, some other Bravo labs that I saw. I saw them originally when they were filming for this event. Because people were sharing on Instagram, obviously. But I didn't really see a lot of other people. There was, oh, Cynthia Bailey was there as well. We got Camille Grammer. Although we didn't get a lot of screen time of Camille. Uh, Denise came. And she wore a pink jacket. She wore a pink jacket. Yes, because, you know, why not? She clearly wanted to piss Dorit off. Um, which, funny enough, Dorit actually did <laughs> question Denise wearing the pink jacket she was like isn't this a white party like is that why are you wearing pink it's like what do you care like what does Dorit care about what Denise is wearing so much unless you're just trying to be shady and shade her on camera which that's clearly what she was doing but nonetheless so we got Denise Denise is confused why Erica's performing what is she performing what is she lip syncing like is she a singer what's what is this all about like, uh, Denise, sweetheart, why don't you go watch the show? And then you'll figure out what Erica's going to be doing on that stage, okay? Um, Mo gets there, shows up to the party, like, surprised. Like, wow, this looks great. Because he really had no hand in it. He also didn't even remember where exactly the party at SoFi was going to be. He was telling people it was going to be out in the parking lot. Which Kyle didn't really appreciate because she's like, excuse me, do I look like somebody that would be throwing a party in a parking lot? No. Anyways. It couldn't be more clear, even at this white party, that the two of them, Kyle and Mo, are like, whoop, whoop. They are not, like, they're trying Kyle's trying. I think Mo would have completely gone. If Kyle would have played into everything's fine, Mo would have done the same and nobody probably would have blinked an eye. But she is, she's not hiding it. Her body language cannot hide it. Her words may stroke the, you know, the niceness of what it is not, even though I still have questions around that. Her body language tells a different story. We've seen it numerous times in this in this season, from the beginning till the end, where it's like a simple uh, showing of affection towards Kyle makes her super uncomfortable, as if, like, why are you touching me? And, like, that, to me, screams betrayal. That's what it screams to me. And I don't, honestly, I don't need to know the details i think we all can you know get a scooby-doo clue specifically watching the last few minutes but i also understand that kyle was looking out for her family here because if she would have gone down that road you know the whole season would have been around this whole spectacle so even if allegedly he did cheat and you know, it was one too many times and she'd had enough because the timing of everything, maybe it happened right when she lost her friend and she's looking around being like, wow, you can't even be here for me half the time. You're investing all your time in this business. Then you're out here with some, some little side chick. And I just lost my friend. No, 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 no. Enough. You know, that's, that's what my gut is telling me. Because here's the thing, guys. I've not been in a marriage for 27, 28 years. Jeff and I have been together probably a little less than half that time. 
your relationships go through ebbs and flows. If you're really invested and you're really showing up, you are tuned into all those things. You can tell when your partner is not being themselves. You can tell when something's off. You can tell when someone's upset. You can tell when someone's closed off, right? But those are things that if both people are willing and really love and care for each other to the point where the relationship is important enough, they will find a way to make it work. Unless there's a situation that makes it quite literally very difficult to even look that person in the face again, let alone even think about working through it. And I think too, Kyle's dropped some hints throughout the season. You know, I think it was last episode. She said she didn't want, she didn't want her girls to deal with, being treated the way that she was being treated. So therefore she needs to lead by example here and, and basically put her foot down and say, I'm not going to be disrespected this way. I want more. I deserve more. And quite honestly, I think as soon as the agency started popping off, I think Mo's character came through. I think he's, he's, he's a, Good looking dude who is very successful now and women are probably throwing themselves at him all the time, whether it's DMs, whether it's events, whether it's at work, whether it's at house showings, whether it's what I mean, Kyle can't be like running around like a crazy person. But at the same time, Kyle's a Capricorn and Capricorns are very good at concealing things they don't want people to know. They're very good at putting a blanket around something. And yeah, it may still look a little crappy, but it's not the real crap. That's what they don't want you to see. And I think in this situation, Kyle being at this white party and basically just kind of doing her own thing. I mean, this was her white party. I'm not even going to say it was her and Moe's because he didn't even know where the party was going to be. So we get Erica Jean finally. She gets on stage and she kills it. It's expensive to be me. Now, I thought that was an interesting song choice for her to perform considering the irony and everything that she's gone through and then for her to sing that. But the song still rings true even with her current situation, babes. It is expensive to be Erica Jane. You can't go from living a lap of luxury and then and then coming down the hill and then having this small, small little place and then having to kind of cut corners to be able to manage your finances, right? With all the legal stuff and all that. It is it's very expensive to be Erica Jane lately, I would imagine. So I think the song is fitting now. It has a different meaning. Just saying. Um, Sutton falls. Yes, Sutton, I'm worried about her. What's going on? She quite literally fell on the stage. I mean, she didn't see the step. Totally normal. Happen to anyone. Uh, but that was about it for the white party. So I'm interested, what other things were filmed that they didn't show because they needed to replace it with this updated footage that they shot after the filming ended the first time because the white party was about half of the episode and nothing really interesting happened at the finale episode that we saw. I feel like there may have, may have been some interactions with the ladies or I don't know. I feel like last week's brunch diamonds brunch situation was meant to go in the finale. That's what I feel. But nonetheless, now we get the news, right? So it's one month later, and it's the People Magazine article has now come out. And you get all the ladies getting the signal to their phones. Oh my gosh, what? <gasps> I can't believe it. 
it's like, really, guys? Half of you were speculating that there was issues in their marriage, so it can't be that shocking. Maybe it's shocking that it would come out. I think in their minds, they're like, wow, you literally waited until the season was done filming to then drop this news. Like, that's kind of how I would have took it. I think Sutton kind of took it that way because she took a lot of heat for asking about Kyle's marriage. So I kind of get that. Like, what? oh, how convenient, how nice for you to control it to this extent, you know? But the question is, you know, yes, People Magazine is an official uh, medium to release information like this, even though it says sources close to Kyle and Mo. So clearly someone planted this story. But who did it? Who did it? Now, if you didn't love Rob Minkoff before, you definitely should love him even more now. Because when he said, but what if Morgan's the one that planted the story? Now, how about that? Why haven't we asked that question? Because wouldn't it be beneficial to her? Look at all the press she's been getting. She is trying to grow her music career. Kyle's definitely there supporting her and helping her through that journey. Kyle's filming a documentary about Morgan Wade. Morgan Wade was at Watch What Happens Live last night with Kyle. They're clearly friends. And I don't know. Maybe it's everything but the intimacy part like the physical stuff you know maybe morgan is just maybe there's a mutually beneficial situation happening here where kyle is giving morgan the exposure that's helping her music career and then in turn morgan is serving as the emotional support mental support that kyle needs right now someone that can cut through her crap, not let her be down on herself and just kind of keep her moving in a way that she keeps moving forward. That's what I think Morgan's like relationship is with Kyle. I don't, I really don't feel like Kyle's a lesbian now. Like I know that she's playing around with the, you know, the insinuations, obviously the press has, has made uh, call outs to this. So, but outside of that, I really don't see a sexual relationship between those two. I think it's very much an emotional, mental uh, connection, not so much physical. But who's to say? I don't know. Maybe Kyle, maybe Kyle is a lesbian. We'll find out in a couple weeks when the reunion's over. I'm just joking. No, I mean, quite honestly, if she came out and was like, I'm a lesbian, I okay, great, amazing. But did Mo cheat? Like, I think we just want some closure as viewers because we, we've we also invested in their relationship watching them for 13 seasons. So to just give this like runaround reasoning as to why it no longer works. I mean, yeah, you're going to get a lot of questions. You're going to get a lot of speculation. Sure. I've been, you know, guilty of doing the same, especially when the news came out initially around their uh, separation. But Kyle then has Erica over and, you know, Erica, it, this was interesting to watch. It, I know Erica is a friend to Kyle. I know that she's a very good friend to Kyle. But we're also doing a show and I, there's a part of me that feels like Erica knows more, obviously, because she's friends with Kyle she knows her limits however there was still some some questions that I think even Erica when she got the answers was like yeah I'm not buying that like anyways girl because here's the thing again Kyle professes it's not one thing it wasn't infidelity on his side it wasn't infidelity on my side it's just, it's just between us. That's where the issue lies. Okay. 
Well, it's not financial, as far as we know, but I, I'm pretty sure it's not. Um. Okay, fine. If if maybe perhaps Mo wasn't really there to emotionally support Kyle while she was dealing with her best friend's passing, would that sting? Yeah. Would I stay mad at someone for a while? Yeah. Would I end my marriage over it? I don't know. And if I did, it wouldn't. That would have been the straw that broke the camel's back, not the only reason. It can't be good, 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 and then all of a sudden there's a bump in the road. Now you're like, I'm out. You didn't give me what I wanted in this one moment, so it's over now. That doesn't make sense to me. I can see that the friendship, or I'm sorry, her friend passing being the catalyst to kind of opening up this Pandora's box of issues. Because I think Kyle's someone who prides herself on being a good mom, a good wife, and a good sister, right? But I think Kyle's also done a lot of things to prove to others that she's capable, that she's worthy, that she's able to build her own nest and build her own little empire. And she's done that. But at the same time, what, what, what did Mo do? Or what has he been doing that collectively has gotten her to this place? So again, it's not infidelity, according to her. But then, it's time for her and Mo to sit the girls down and tell them. Because she explains that when the People Magazine article dropped, they were all out at dinner. Could you imagine, you guys, something like that dropping while you're at dinner and you have no idea it's coming out? You have no idea it's coming out. But the way she explains it, though, with the girls being there, I don't think that Kyle's the one that planted that story. And if she did, she wouldn't be out at a public place at dinner with her family so that everyone could get those notifications in public. So I don't think that she was the one that planted it. However, if we go back to Rob Minkoff's theory, maybe Morgan planted it. Not saying that Kyle didn't know Morgan was going to plant it, but she's, I don't want to say she's the least suspect here, but no one was really looking at her as someone who would leak stuff to the press. She generally was just kyle's lesbian lover in the press so there wasn't really anything like that but rob saying that kind of makes me think twice now i'm looking at it like hmm, maybe morgan did maybe she was part of all this maybe they they constructed all this in a way that would kind of give them time to figure stuff out to get their stories straight to get a full understanding from from the both of them, what they're going to do moving forward, how they would speak about things publicly. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. It was this scene though, where Kyle sits down with Mo and the girls that it really was solidified for me. She's done. There's no working this out. This isn't a, a minor bump in the road that will work itself out with some therapy. No, it, it's in her eyes. I've seen those eyes before. I've seen those eyes before. If you've had anybody in your life that has been done with something, you can see, you can see it in their eyes. And I, that's exactly what I was focused on. Her eyes were like, this is a meeting. I'm taking charge and I'm done. You can tell the girls are confused because clearly they did a very good job. I mean, they did it to us for 13 seasons, but they clearly were working full time around making sure that their girls never saw any issues within their marriage. And good for them. But then it makes me think like, well, if you're doing that, when there is something like this that comes up, that's a bit traumatic because it's it doesn't... To others, it's not going to make sense. To you guys, it will, because you're the only ones that really know what the real issues are. But outside of that, 
everyone's going to look at it the way that they're like, what? What happened? Who cheated? Like, because usually people will put a finale to a relationship, marriage, partnership, et cetera, when there's something like cheating or there's a huge financial issue or someone's going to jail. I, I mean, that's why I'm saying that it's not financial. It's, you know, yes, it could be a multitude of things. And that's why I think it wasn't just one thing. I think there was just these things, whether they were small or big, they eventually added up and Mo was shit out of luck, you know? But right before they sit down with their girls to explain what the new normal is going to be at this moment, they're having a little back and forth. And Mo makes a joke being like, well, at least it's you having the affair this time. She said, yeah, at least it's me for once. Okay, so you know, Kyle, you know you're filming a show. You also know that they edit this show. And you also know they love to play around with the edit and do all this stuff, facial expressions and sound bite. So you saying it like that, to me, felt like a dig at him, like a real one. Like, yeah, imagine that me this time not you like every other time because I think in her mind too and she did mention this when they were um where was it that they went where Sutton was licking everyone's armpits and feet anyway she said there that you know she's had issues with how Mo engages people on Instagram like in the DMs or people following him or messaging him so I think because he's a natural flirt, I think combining that with success, money, power, he seems like the type that would be a little sneaky link, as Giselle would say. So maybe she's let a lot of stuff slide because maybe she didn't have, I'm literally speculating, you guys, but I'm saying like, I'm trying to think of it in a, in a way that would make sense. Like, obviously, like, I don't think he's innocent. I'm not saying she is, but a lot of people are like, well, why is it? Why are we asking what he did? What did she do? Well, it doesn't sound like she's the one that did anything that broke the marriage up because from her vantage point, it seems like Mo's the one that did something. So I don't think it was Kyle. I think Kyle's reacting and so people might assume like, oh, maybe she went off and had an affair with Morgan. No, I think it was the other way around. I think she was in a hole. I think she looked around and there was no one there giving her what she needed. And Kyle is clearly forever changed. I mean, death changes people. So if Mo's walking around acting like nothing's wrong all the time and and not wanting to dive into what's going on with Kyle, then I could see Kyle being more alone and stuff and feeling like, what is this? Like, what is the point of this? I also know Kyle doesn't think that that, that medium was talking about her, but she was Kyle. She was, she said, when your kids get older, you both will have nothing in common. He won't be able to emotionally fulfill you. These are some of the things that are playing out. Your kids are grown. They're moving out of the house. You guys have less and less in common. And from the sound of it, he hasn't been able to emotionally fulfill you. Hello. It was not about Camille because it doesn't even make sense. Her children were not grown when her and Kelsey divorced. They were still young. So that that doesn't, that's not about her. It was, a, it was totally about Kyle. And maybe she's in denial and doesn't want to admit it out outwardly publicly because then it makes her look a certain way too because you know it's I get it it's never enough if she did come out and say yes he did cheat on me that everyone wouldn't take that as a good enough answer they would go backtrack to then find every single time where he may have cheated and then bring that back up to surface which again would be damaging for the girls would be damaging for family for the business for everything So I do believe that she's going to hold on to that information for now. 
Not to say it'll never come out, but maybe she'll wait for the dust to settle around it when they figured stuff out where they can openly have a dialogue. Now, here's the other interesting part. We saw a clip the other day that I shared of buying Beverly Hills season two, which is going to be on Netflix March 22nd. And the preview clip was of Mo talking to his girls or their girls, rather. Kyle was not in the scene. But the way he's explaining it is almost like he has no idea why this is all happening. It's just Kyle came to him and was like, I want a separation. You can go date who you want. I'll date who I want. We won't ask each other any questions. Maybe it's that Mo doesn't take accountability. Or he doesn't admit to things. And, and so maybe that on top of it. I mean, it could be a plethora of things at this point. All I know is the last few minutes where Kyle says, or she answers the producer. Because the producer, again, I'm sure they're like, what? What is it? I don't understand. Like, So they ask her one last time, what's this one thing? that you two can't seem to get over. And then this answer is what prompts me to think that this has been a multitude of uh, betrayals. I don't know if they were infidelity betrayals or, or in another area of life, but I can only imagine if it was infidelity, that would be a really big reason why someone would feel this is not going to work itself out ever. Mainly because it seems like Kyle's not able to come back from it. Because in her answer, she says there were things that happened that basically broke her trust and she's not been able to recover from it, from them. So it's not just one thing. It's a multitude of things. And I just think that the friend passing was just a splash of water in the face to wake her up to say, okay, snap out of it and look at everything for what it is. Um... So that was pretty much the finale. I think we all still have a few more questions around, you know, ins and outs of Mo and Kyle's issue around their separation. But I think we've all been able to gather what she's throwing down. I think she's saying it without saying it, especially those last few minutes it was very telling. Um, so, yeah, listen. If I'm going to be honest, we could have just had like two of the episodes for the season and then the reunion because the rest of it was just filler. I can't even remember what most of the season was about. Can you? It was it was awful for Beverly Hills. Season 13, 13's not everyone's lucky number, but this surely is not Beverly Hills lucky number. 13, thank you, next. Let's hope season 14 is better also not really sure if kyle will come back next season so let me know if you're watching this let me know in the comments do you think kyle will come back for season 14 i don't know well guys that is a wrap on this episode of Giorgio says i am so happy i am also going to be dropping a podcast recapping the season finale of Real Housewives of Miami because they've been killing it this season, okay? They're also in the winning uh, section of reunion looks right now because it's really hard to beat that. I'm just saying. Anyways, I hope you guys are enjoying your Thursday so far. And uh, if you're having drinks tonight, have one for me. I actually am going out to meet a friend for some drinks and we're going to be discussing some uh, ideas around content and some interesting projects that we could possibly work on together. So until the next episode, you guys, I will talk to you on the next one. Bye.